There's like 10 of them. Cruise Automation, a subsidiary of General Motors, has been making the rounds in the news lately, and especially this last week, though not exactly for the most positive of reasons. In fact, it's gotten to the point where Cruise has agreed to remove 50% of their fleet off the roads until an official investigation can be done into some of the most recent incidents that have happened, and that kind of thing doesn't just happen for any old reason. So let's try to find out what the heck is going on over there, and compare it to something viewers of this channel should be very familiar with, Tesla's full self-driving beta. Now I'd like to make something abundantly clear before we get into the nitty gritty. Cruise's safety record is significantly better than the average human, despite the clips you're gonna see that may make you think otherwise, and I myself would still rather take my chances riding around in one of these compared to the last few Ubers I've taken. And with that said, I'm gonna let them have it. Let's first discuss the incident that kicked off this investigation, and then we'll have a look at some clips that never made the news, but definitely still deserve a discussion. On August 17th, just one week after officials allowed the cruise service to expand, one of their cars collided with a fire truck who was responding to an emergency. Yeah, can you dispatch a battalion chief who's been involved in an accident versus a cruise vehicle? There was one person in the vehicle. Cruise released a statement on X that says the car entered the intersection on a green light, which isn't technically the legal thing to do when an emergency vehicle with lights and sirens is approaching, but on paper, it does seem forgivable. But things get more interesting when one of the firefighters involved stated that the car looked like it lurched. Not only that, but while ABC7 News was filming a fire truck going through that same intersection for some B-roll, it shows a cruise vehicle again not yielding properly. Now, I do have a theory on why incidents like this and the ones we'll be looking at shortly are seemingly happening more and more frequently, and it has to do with the technology behind the vehicles themselves. Cruise uses a combination of 21 radar modules, 5 LIDARs, and 14 cameras to navigate a pre-mapped world, in this case being a geofenced area of San Francisco. And in my opinion, this approach shares more in common with an AI out of a video game than it does with a human. Okay, okay, admittedly, Cruise does deserve a little more credit than what I'm giving them here, but I'd still argue they're in the same ballpark, as I'll explain. Crews and other companies using these technologies don't see the world like you or me. They drive by using pre-planned navigation paths and use their sensors to make sure they're exactly where they're supposed to be and can't go beyond the high definition maps they're programmed on. And don't get me wrong, they are able to get through some extremely complex driving situations which do look very intelligent, but I believe this is not real intelligence, but rather handwritten code on what the car should do in particular situations. In fact, we know this for sure because they explain exactly how they fix some of these problems their cars are having with video you can watch on their website under the safety section. So let's take a look at one. Step one is identifying a problem area. In this example, the cruise vehicles were behaving too timidly around cyclists, and instead of passing them like a human would do, it would slowly follow behind them, making them uncomfortable. Step two, a human being comes in and codes a brand new behavior for these types of encounters to make the car behave more naturally. Step three is testing their changes using a simulation they've built, and if everything looks good, they ship it, and all cruise vehicles now have the newly obtained knowledge of how to pass slow-moving cyclists. There is a major problem with this approach though, and it is that sharing the roads with humans is infinitely complex and cannot possibly be simulated accurately. There's always going to be situations that the car cannot account for, causing it to make a poor decision, more than likely from human written code that didn't account for a particular edge case that didn't show up in their simulations. And from this, you can begin to see the problem which quickly can turn into a game of whack-a-mole. You don't want a car that's too passive, especially in a place like San Francisco, but you also don't want to go too far in the other direction either. Let me paint a picture of this for you. In this video released early on on Cruise's deployment, you can see how biased towards safety they make it. This Cruise is waiting very patiently for the mother and daughter to cross the street, more so than the average humans on these roads, I'd say. And they even make the lights flash because it has such a good soul. Compare that to a more recent video of a cruise, a year of software updates later, forcing its way through an intersection with a mother and her children actively walking through a crosswalk. A very different picture indeed. Or how about this clip that may be a little bit hard to see, but seemingly shows a cruise stuck at the edge of an intersection, but instead of waiting, it goes straight through a red light with cross traffic still approaching. Imagine being in the back of this car with no driver up front. 
and here where you can see one going right by road close signs with a construction worker that's in disbelief. Probably not the first time either, as we've seen from some recent news articles. While these clips may seem unrelated, I think they have a lot more in common than it first appears. Driving in a place like San Francisco is hard. If you're too passive, you're going to have problems getting along on the road. I can easily see an engineer coding the vehicle to be a little bit more assertive around pedestrians because it was behaving too timidly or continue through red lights if it's already inside the intersection to avoid obstructing traffic, or even ignore some construction cones because it's had poor behavior in the past where it slammed on the brakes for something and caused an accident. All of these changes sound good on paper and probably did great in their simulations, but can cause unpredictable behaviors in the car. What we really need instead of this video game style approach is a generalized driving solution, and that's where Tesla's approach comes in. Instead of adding more human written code about how the vehicle should behave, Tesla is taking the complete opposite approach, and version 12 will remove over 300,000 lines of human written code and replace it with 3,000 lines of end-to-end -end AI. It's also currently the only system that navigates the roads like we do, and doesn't rely on LiDAR or pre-planned routes. It looks into the world and builds a local map around it that it drives through using its cameras and neural networks, meaning it can drive anywhere and works very similarly to how our eyes and brain work. You can think of it like this. Current driverless vehicles like Cruz and Waymo that rely on things like HD maps and LiDAR are kind of like chatbots from the early 2000s. Sure, they may work, but they rely on if-then statements and human-written code and can never go out of bounds of what the programmer programmed to do or pass for a human. Now we have ChatGPT, which has taken the world by storm and has absolutely redefined what we know about artificial intelligence, and Tesla's full self-driving beta will soon become a first-generation drive GPT. Mark my words. LiDAR is, is a fool's errand, and, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of... A, a, expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous.